My name is Denise Esner. I am co-owner at Esner's Custom Butchering in Scott City, Missouri. My in-laws started the business in 1983, primarily as a custom slaughter. They slaughtered beef and hogs. They've added on twice as, as we went through the years. The first edition was, was in the early 90s. The second edition was in the mid-90s when they actually added on a retail store. Our shop right now sits on probably about two acres is what we sit on between the shop, the building, and the lagoon. Our shop itself is like a 40 by 80, so not, not just a great big shop, but it's big enough for us to get what we need done in. The funding through the state of Missouri, the, the meat processors grant, is allowing us to make some changes and, and redo our building structure, our building flow. It was needed. We were going to have to do it anyway, but this made it just a little bit better for our business. We're adding on a new carcass cooler so that we, we could remove our old one. It needed to be updated, and then that's going to allow us to rearrange our processing room and then install a new walk-in freezer and also expand our retail. So it's kind of exciting, not gaining a lot. I think, you know, processing room, we're probably only gaining 100 square feet, but we're going to, going to gain storage and increase our flow. My father-in-law was going to retire in... 2015. He had his date set and he had the shop sold to somebody outside the family. I don't remember if it was a couple months or a couple weeks um, before that sale was supposed to go through. It failed. So my husband and I were both ready for a change in our, in our careers we had then. So in 2015, we purchased the shop at first against my father-in-law's will, I think. <laughs> it, took, it took a lot of talk to talk him into because he knew. He knew the hours. He knew the work. He knew what it was going to take. So it, it took some convincing on our part that we were crazy and we really did want to do this. And it's been good. He still helps us slaughter on Tuesdays. Whenever we get behind, he does. He comes help. Not every day, not every week, but it's, it's nice to have him. And when we have ideas, when we want to change something or try something new, we can always run it off him because he's been in the business for so long. He's just, he's an excellent tool to have. And we, we utilize him as much as we possibly can. My husband, Tony, and I own Esners together. It's set up as an LLC, and then we are the, the owners and the two loan employees there. The shop with, with just the two of us, it has, it has benefits and disadvantages at the same time. The advantages are we each know what to do, and we can just, just get our job done in a day's time. We don't have to worry about watching someone else or you know making sure that anything's done right. We know that everything goes out the door is to our standards. It, it has our quality on it. So that's a major benefit to it just being the two of us. The disadvantage is it's just the two of us. So if something comes up with the kids or, you know, a, a family issue outside that doesn't involve the business, it's, it's sometimes a struggle to get away and make all that work. But we, we find a way we've got family that's, that's good and supportive. So, so we make it work. Right now, we're, we're primarily a, a beef slaughter plant, um, so we do custom beef processing, and then we also have a retail store. In the retail store, we carry all the, the major cuts, the common cuts of beef, pork, and chicken. Um, we make our own brats, marinade chicken, chicken breast, cure our own bacon. On the custom side, we do custom curing for hams and bacons. We do smoked meats also, and then we do process boneless deer meat. One of our biggest selling items is our ground beef. We only sell one kind. It's the ground round. There's absolutely nothing fancy to it other than it's just a straight ground round. We get compliments all the time on our ground beef, on our burger, that it's so different than what you could find in the store. So we we take that as a, as a compliment. And you know, once we get them in the door to buy one product and they like it, then they start looking at other things and hopefully find some other stuff that they like. We make our own bratwurst, cure our own bacon, and marinate our own chicken breast and pork steaks. Especially when people are busy, those items that are already marinated, already seasoned, ready to go on the grill, in the crock pot, on the oven, are huge. It's, it's a time saver to people, you know, to not have to have, to take the time to thaw something out a day ahead of time, season it, and marinate it themselves. Um, so those items that we sell that come pre-seasoned, pre-marinated by us that are ready to go and ready to cook for the, for the consumer have definitely increased in sales. As we see that time is limited, everybody's lives are busy. So those, those items tend to move quickly. Our typical customer on the beef slaughter is our, our local producers. We only, with it just being the two of us, we just slaughter six beef a week. Again, we're limited on that cooler size, freezer size, and then also just on time for what we can get done um, in a week's time. So 
mainly our customers are going to be local farmers um, that feed out six to 10 beef a year for themselves, family, neighbors, kind of along those lines, the smaller farmers in the area. We do have one larger um, feedlot. We use them. If a customer wants to purchase a beef and they don't know of a local farmer themselves, we utilize that, that feedlot um, as a source for us to, to kind of fill the gap between the, the customers and the farmers that don't have the connections. Our retail store is primarily set up just for walk-in customers. We also do phone orders. Um, we're not, not big enough. We don't offer delivery or we don't ship anything, but primarily set up just for walk-in customers. We have customers that come, you know, as far away as, as an hour, an hour and a half away to shop with us, you know, and then also the, the local customers that we have. So we like to think that we offer a, a good service and, and good products to draw from such a large area. Um, on the retail side, our typical customer is going to be, I mean, really just about anybody. We've got... <laughs> We get, we get tickled by that. We've got the elder single people. I've, I've got lots of grandmas and grandpas now that I didn't have before. Moms and dads, middle-aged people that come in and they're constantly checking on the kids. And, and my kids have more grandparents than what they ever dreamed they could have. Um, and then we've got our age, which we can really relate to. We try to offer a good quality product along with the service. And we think the service is what really gives us the step ahead. They come in, we, you know, we celebrate lots of milestones. We celebrate birthdays with people. We celebrate last chemo treatments. We celebrate all kinds of stuff that we can, can hopefully help make somebody's day a little better. So there are a couple of restaurants that we service, you know, very small restaurants that are, that are local that we service. Um, with COVID, the restaurants that we service went from dine-in to carry-out only, so that definitely hurt the amount of customers that they had. One of our one of our restaurant customers that did carry-out only stopped carrying the item that they usually purchased from us. So during COVID, during the middle of all the shutdowns, we did lose that customer. But since things have opened back up, we've got them back, and they're working on getting their business back. So we're trying to do everything we can to help help them get going as well. The biggest thing that sets us apart from other meat processors in our area is the way that we package our meat when we custom process. We still do a white butcher paper wrap. We feel that it holds up better, longer longer freezer life. Therefore, the, the customer gets to enjoy a, a better quality product for a longer period of time. In our retail store, we do go ahead and vacuum package our meat. Um, our, display, our display cases are frozen though. So like whenever you, whenever you shop at our store, everything's packaged. Most, most steaks are packaged two in a package and they're already frozen. So you can take our packages home and put them straight in the freezer to store them, or you can thaw them out in warm water or, or you know, your, your choice of, of thawing your product um, that evening for use. So the benefit we have over the large grocery stores, the large retailers is you can see your, your cut still in the clear packaging, but you don't have to take it home and do any, any other prep work for storage. It's ready to go straight into the freezer for storage. We are now in the process of going state inspected on beef slaughter. Our decision to switch from custom exempt to state inspected is primarily at this point driven um, by two factors. One being the Missouri state grant. That was probably the, the biggest factor, but we also do have several, several farmers that we slaughter for that would like to market their own beef. So when we go state inspected, we can slaughter and process their beef under inspection they can take that beef home and they can actually sell it themselves within the state of Missouri. So it's, it's kind of a bonus that we will have added for our customers that they can, can market and sell their own products. Our producers that are wanting to market their own animals, they've got, they have customers that are contacting them that don't have the storage or the cash to buy, you know, half a beef, a whole beef or a quarter of a beef. So if the producers have their beef inspected in their freezer whenever they're contacted by a customer, they can sell that customer so many pounds of ground beef or just the steaks that they need. I think the biggest, the biggest change or the biggest challenge that, that Tony and I have faced so far is COVID-19. We'd kind of been sailing along since 2015 doing, doing what we were doing and Things were working. COVID-19 hit. Grocery stores didn't have meat. We still did. Fortunately, we were able to, sometimes we had to take orders and people had to wait a couple days, but we were still able to service all of our customers. 
um, provide them with all of the products that they that they wanted or needed at the time. Our biggest challenges with that though became just the management of of keeping our supply, you know, finding finding different suppliers so that we could keep the products that we needed in stock at the most affordable rate that we could, which was a big challenge. Labor was huge. Fortunately for us, I had a cousin um, that was on spring break from college that got extended. She took over our retail. She could tell that it was not working. When when COVID-19 started, um, we contacted our local health department to see how we should handle um, our retail store in contact with customers to make sure that we were following whatever guidelines were out there. Uh, they they recommended to limit contact with customers, and the easiest way to do that was to close the retail store to walk-in customers and just do phone orders and, and carry out curbside pickup. So that is how we ran for about two months, from the middle of March to the middle of May. We did only curbside call-ahead orders, which which was fun at times. Um, at other times, it was completely crazy, but but we survived it. In the middle of May, whenever the governor opened the state back up, our, our intentions were to leave our store closed uh, to walk in customers and still still carry still carry on with the curbside pickup just kind of for ourselves we didn't know for sure how things were we wanted to make sure that we stayed healthy so we could stay open um, still provide our, our products and our services to the community our customers pushed they wanted to pick out their own meat they wanted to come back in to look at their they wanted to look at their steaks they wanted to see the back the package of bacon before they bought it so we did open the store back up toward the end of May and let customers come in and shop. Most of our customers are okay with that. Uh, we still have a, a handful of customers that for whatever reason, they're not comfortable coming in. So we still, we carry on the curbside. Our custom processing, we've always stayed booked out a good six to nine months was our, was our average. You know, we, there was always that much wait time. Um, when COVID hit, we instantly went to be booked out a year. Right now, we are booked out, I guess, a, right at a year and a half. The wait time is, for, for our customers, it's been hard. Um, some of them are willing to wait. They like, what we, they like our product. They like how we, how we package, how we cut everything, so they're willing to wait. Others are, and completely understandably so, are trying to find another processor. The problem is most processors in our area, there's very few, so most of them are, are booked out the same. That's, that's the big downfall. You know, being busy is good, but being busy and, and not being able to help your customers is, is a hard thing, but we all have to say no at some point in time just to, to keep functioning with our, our life outside of the, the business, which is important too. If we would have known in 2015 the demand that was going to be on our business in 2020, we would have tried to change the flow of our of our business ahead of time and added a couple pieces of equipment that would speed up the processing just to meet the demand and give us an extra 30 minutes a day outside the shop would have been would have been nice to know the flow of our shop is is very important to our production and and how much we can produce in a day's time we have to make sure that from start to finish we limit the amount of steps we have to take to get a product into the freezer and we limit the amount of times we have to handle the product all of that's it, it's good for the product and it's good for us it, it helps us get that get the product from start to finish into the freezer and, and then into the consumers hands um, as quickly and efficiently as possible <laughs>